basic concepts in geography. This is chapter one, key issue two, lesson one of two. In the first series of lessons, we focused on how geographers described where things are. In the next two lessons, we will be talking about key issue two in our textbooks. Why is each point on earth unique? So identify geographic characteristics of places, including toponyms, site, and situation. These are some really important concepts before we begin to get deeper into our studies of human geography that we need to make sure we understand. In the first key issue, we focus on location. In this key issue, we're now talking about place. Place is a specific point on earth distinguished by a particular characteristic. Think about what makes places unique versus what makes them similar. It also describes the features place using location, right? So in order to truly identify place, you need to talk about the location. So place, like the name, the toponym. For instance, Pittsburgh. Right? And the name Pittsburgh has some meaning. It's named after the fact that the British had Fort Pitt there. Or Duquesne University, which was named after Fort Duquesne from the French. Those names have meaning. Those are called toponyms. The site. What is the physical character of that site? What is the climate? The water, the soil, the vegetation, the latitude, the elevation. And we also recognize that people can change. The physical characteristics of that site. Situation. What is the location relative to other locations? This is how we find unfamiliar places. If you've never been to Duquesne University, but you have been to Pittsburgh or you know where Pittsburgh is, you would use a situation of Duquesne inside of Pittsburgh or near to downtown Pittsburgh to be able to explain to someone how to get there. And that's how we also understand the importance. So the city of Pittsburgh is located, as we know, along the three rivers, in the Ohio River Valley that empties into the Mississippi, right? We understand the significance of the situation of that city and the site of that city. Another very important concept is regions. Regions are areas of the earth that are defined, defined by one or more distinctive characteristics. Humans define these regions. And so because of that, a specific place can be in more than one region. Let's continue to use Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh is in the eastern United States. Some people would clump it in the northeastern. Most people who live in Pittsburgh um, would consider themselves from northeastern United States. But really, Pittsburgh is almost part of the Midlands or the Midwest, and we're so close to Ohio. You might even think about another region, Steeler Country, or the Steel Mill region, or the Rust Belt region, right? Um, so there are many ways to define a location of a place in terms of region. And regional studies can, is a whole other branch of human geography that you might find interesting to study. This is more of the cultural landscape approach created uh, by Leblanc and Brunhez, and then adopted by Sauer and Platt. And um, all of these um, men were uh, geographers in the 19th century into the 20th century. And basically, regional studies is basically saying that there's an area fashioned from nature by a cultural group. Uh, that culture is the agent of change, and the landscape is the result. So what is the human impact um, in a certain area on the, on the landscape, how has that landscape changed over time? What I really want to focus on is getting some vocabulary down for the three different types of regions. Formal, functional, and vernacular. Formal is sometimes also referred to as uniform region. Functional is sometimes referred to as a nodal region. And vernacular is sometimes referred to as a perceptual region. A formal region is an area which everyone shares one or more distinctive characteristics in common. A functional region is an area organized around a focal point or a node. 
characteristics are chosen to define a functional region, dominates at a central focus, and then diminishes outward, right? So an example of functional would be perhaps um, you are a fan of the Baltimore Ravens, but the further you get away from, the Balt from Baltimore, the less fans you have. Vernacular, area that people exist as part of their cultural identity. Let me show you a few examples. This is a formal region. The three maps here on this slide show the winner by region in from the left to the right 2004, 2008, and 2012 presidential elections. In 2004, Democrat John Kerry won most of the states in the Northeast, Upper Midwest, and Pacific Coast regions, while the Republican, George, President George W. Bush, won the remaining regions. In 2008 and 2012, we see the victory of President Barack Obama, capturing some states and regions that had been won entirely by the Republicans four years prior. In 2012, we see that he carried nearly the same states as he did in 2008. And if you would pull up a map of the 2016 election, you would note that a lot of these critical areas that we know in the region called the Rust Belt turned red and was part of the significant victory um, of President Trump over Hillary Clinton. Functional region. Here we have Verizon and AT&T. New technology is breaking down traditional functional regions because the internet and satellite dish television reach portions and patrons of the country further and further away from that central node. So we think about cell phone towers and coverage. We obviously recognize that in the Midwest or in some of these more harsh environments, you have less cell phone towers, so thus you have less coverage. And, and so sometimes these maps really show you the concentration as well of population. Uh, but cell phone tower services for Verizon, AT&T would be a really good example of a functional region. A vernacular region. The South is popularly distinguished as a distinct vernacular region within the United States. According to a number of factors, sometimes we call the South the South because of their mild climate. Sometimes we talk about their ability to grow certain crops you can't grow in other parts of the country. Sometimes it's because it's part of the Bible Belt, the predominance of the Baptist churches, right? Perhaps it's the location of the Confederate states or below average high school and college graduation rates or the right to work states. And there's all these different borders that are created here based on the different ways that we might be using the term South. Okay, well that brings us to the end of Chapter 1, Key Issue 2, Lesson 1. This is Social Studies with Mrs. Johns.